So we're recording and welcome to the PyScript uh, community technical call and the day is the 2nd of July 2024. My gosh, we're over halfway through the year. Where did this year go? <sighs> Time flies when you're enjoying yourself. So I'm Nicholas, I'm going to be uh, chairing the meeting and uh, Andrea uh, is going to be uh, minute keeping. Um, as is traditional, uh, if you are new here or you've never been to one of these meetings, uh, we invite you to introduce yourself. Uh, so, uh, Agria, would you like to say hello? Hi there. So, thank you for allowing me to introduce myself. I am a software engineer at OneSite, uh, where I work on PyDite. And uh, I'm here for this community call because I understand that PyDite and PyScript and all of the interactive documentation landscape shares a lot of common interests. And I'm here to talk more about PyDite. Perfect, bravo, excellent. And uh, and Anna, would you like to introduce yourself? Okay. May I? Yes, please. Uh, actually, I'm a beginner. I'm interested to learn Python, and uh, I'm, I have joined your meeting because I'm, I don't know anything about programming, but I'm so interested and I want to be uh, a Python programmer and so uh, I have to learn and practice it uh, uh, so deeply and the pie skipped because you are the, all of you are the boss person. <laughs> so I'm here. It's very good to have you here. Just be aware that this call can get very technical uh, and, very quickly. Uh, so and all of you, uh, I hope for all of you keep me in your prayer because I want to be a Python programmer. Thank, Thank you. you. So, um, okay. So, uh, uh, Andrea Martin and myself have been here before, so we... Uh, uh, just very quickly, um, so we'll work at Anaconda on PyScript, essentially, is, is, is what you need to know um, for that. Um, and uh, then uh, the next item is announcements. And uh, Agria, would you like to make your announcement? Sure. Thank you for offering a space to do it. Um, Excuse so me, I sir. May I, uh, may I ask you something? Uh, I want to know um, all of your country name, please, please. Where are you from, sir? Uh, in Tol. Ah, please. okay. So I'm based in the UK, just north of London. Uh, uh, Martin, okay. where are you? I'm based uh, in Texas. And Andrea, uh, where are you? I'm in Italy. You're in Italy. And Agria, where are you? Oh, I'm from India. From India? India. Ah, uh, and, and so Anna, I'm where are you from? I'm, I'm... I'm from I'm from Bangladesh. From Bangladesh. Ah, okay. I see. I see. Okay, so uh, let's keep them. Let's keep the conversation going um, and stick to uh, the the agenda. So, agree. Apologies for the interruption, but um, the floor is yours now. Thank you, and I don't mind the interruption. So I I'm here for uh, announcing that we are transitioning from Gitter uh, to Discord. Uh, for all official communication and other purposes for PyRide in the coming years. And uh, we are certainly taking a lot of inspiration from how the PyScript server is set up. It's really set up very well. I was just wondering if there is a, an appropriate platform or a place uh, on the Py, PyScript Discord server where I can advertise a link to the server and whether there are any other community initiatives where uh, the PyScript developers or developer advocates could advertise our new space? Um, well, first of all, you're very well. Congratulations on the move. Uh, I once used Gitter for an open source project of mine, and Gitter feels like it's just sort of floating away into the hereafter, as it were, and uh, Discord is where everybody is. Uh, so congratulations on setting that up. Uh, when it comes to your second point, which is, uh, where can I share this? Uh, feel free to share it in chat, which is the main channel, uh, or announcements. Um, you know, we're a very friendly place. 
So, uh, and we welcome folks from adjacent projects like Pyodide as well. Um, you're, you're, you're very welcome here. Um, and, you know, please don't hesitate to interact in any way, shape or form uh, on, on the Discord server. Um, you know, uh, I, I'm trying to think of other spaces. I guess I'm seeing Hood next week uh, at Europython. Um, so if you're ever... Uh, in Prague next week, uh, come along to Europython, and um, there's a WebAssembly summit that I'm helping to organize, and Hood's going to be speaking at that. So I'm looking forward to catching up with Hood. But there are lots of ways in which I think that we can uh, keep in touch with each other, PyDide and uh, and PyScript. Um, and we do the same with MicroPython as well, which is the other Python runtime that we use in PyScript too. Um, so yeah, uh, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. And actually, I've been in touch with Hood already uh, because also I'm transitioning to be a maintainer for Pyodide yeah. soon. Oh, congratulations. So, uh, actually, I'm not very close there. I'm still like a maintainer trainee, so I have triage permissions, but I don't have right access. Yeah. But it is certainly something that's uh, on my list to do throughout the year. Yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, congratulations, and please share. The, feel free to share the link, and I'll see you over in the uh, Pyodide um, server as well. Um, you can say hello over there. Um, okay, is there anything um, else I on that point? Question, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, I didn't mean to say that there's. I have another question about it. Yeah, please go for it. Um, so I advertised like the server, the invite link to the server in another uh, place, mm -hmm. and. I saw that they had some uh, safeguards around adding servers, like links to servers, and that led me to get kicked from that server. So I oh. was wondering if there's something here that uh, you might need to whitelist me. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I am an admin, so I can unblock you if it's blocked. Um, I didn't set up the Discord uh, server, uh, so I'm not quite sure what the settings are right now um my advice is you only live once so uh so try it and if if you suddenly disappear in a puff of smoke in this call we know what's happened and i will uh, whitelist you after the call because clearly we're recording this so uh i have to finish this 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 call but um yeah uh try it okay i'll mute myself now and do it on yeah, no, t t t give, give us a thumbs up when you've done it and... Uh... <laughs> yep. Cool, fantastic. Okay, so the next, um, the next section uh, is uh, a new section uh, that Andrea and I decided we needed, which is we wanted to just talk about upcoming changes, upcoming tickets that people need to be uh, aware of and work that we're planning to do. Um, so, um, uh, so generally, give your name, uh, give a quick description, and then perhaps a link uh, to the ticket. So uh, mine is the first one, um, and uh, it's good that Martin's here because uh, it's the update on the PyScript.web work, and you'll be able to see um, that work over there on the linked uh, GitHub pull request. Um, so essentially, I just want to highlight that what was PyWeb and PyDOM in the PyScript namespace has now been um, put on a severe diet um, and uh, refactored so that it's all going to be under the, the equivalent functionality is going to be under PyScript.web. Um, I finished writing the documentation today for it. Um, when Martin says, I'm done, I'm just going to check the documentation again one last time to make sure it all kind of adds up and then that will be uh, landing in the next release. So I just wanted to make sure that you're aware of that. And what does PyScript.web do? It gives you Pythonic access to the uh, DOM. Uh, so Agria has just sort of, uh, uh, has he been kicked? I'm not sure, who knows. Um, let's see what happens. He's still here, I guess. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say about PyScript.web. Martin, do you want to say anything? <clears throat> no. No, I mean, it'll look startlingly similar to how PyDOM looked anyway. And um, yeah, but just but with a few bug fixes and um, yeah, a few more extra couple of little features. But it's not going to be a massive change other than the namespace change is the yeah, big yeah. one, obviously. Yeah, yeah. 
fantastic. Okay, so next we have um, Andrea. The floor's yours, matey. Yeah, <clears throat> so because it's a new format, I wasn't sure because this is supposed to be an agenda item probably, but it's also related to... Uh, okay, so I'll tell you what, uh, let's put that at the end as an agenda item, and then you can tell yeah, us... Yeah, but everything else is related yeah, to yeah, the yeah, agenda yeah, items. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you put that there. But you're still the next person on the list uh, for the upcoming yeah. priorities. So do you want to just talk us through um, uh, the five um, items? Uh, four, five, one, two, three, four, five items that you've got there very quickly? No, because they are all related to the <laughs> to the shared direct buffer story. Okay, so, so I, let's yeah. just ignore all of that then and carry on with the shadow buffer story. Then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I announced it already, and I did work a lot to make it better. Test in mobile and desktop. And basically, long story short, I found a way to make um, stuff work out of the box without any issue whatsoever. Uh, which is not in coincident, um, and it's not in here as well. Okay, so maybe here. So basically, I have a module. Uh, and you've not, module you have not, you're not showing your screen, Andrea, just letting you know this. Oh, well, that's better because I, I was just looking around my screen to find what the what, what I was one what I wanted to share, um, which is this. Can you see it? It's just coming up, and we can see it. Thank you. Also, so um, this is a demo. Basically, the main point is that I'm importing this module, but I don't have to. If I have headers, uh, everything works as expected. I can use Atomics, Notify, and uh, and everything else. And in Workers, I can create uh, shared array buffers, and, and everything is looks normal. I mean, normal in terms of shared array buffer stack. So I can post message my view, which has to be an in, in 32 array. And then I can just wait synchronously for it. And then I can just update something. And then uh, and that's it. Uh, this is not a sync um, callback. This is just everything happens synchronously. I keep hearing noise. Uh, sorry. Can you hear me properly? Yes, we can. Keep going. OK. OK. Um, so. What this module does, it provides exactly the native functionality when the headers are right, when the headers are not right, it, it provides um, what's usually called a polyfill, so something that somehow works. And also the reason I'm importing this stuff is that I, I didn't want this module to be obtrusive in a way that it would patch the global scope things because that's not gonna play too well with uh, with uh, with other modules around, um, but yeah, let's see a demo. Maybe it's worth a thousand um, uh, words. Words, <laughs> uh, yes. So this is me asking from the worker. I'm asking if you can, if you see the worker logic. I have this ask a question. The ask a question creates this shared array buffer, and I'm just doing everything synchronously. So here are these my worker story is completely synchronous, and I'm blocking the worker until something happens to the view, and something happens when I press enter, and uh, then I populate the view with my um, UTF-16 uh, values, and then I notify the view at index zero, actually index. It can be any index, but right now it's just zero for convenience. Um, and that's it. I'm, I'm asking the name. What is your name? So I'm going to type my name in. My name is Andrea. And now I press enter. Uh, what is your surname? Which was exactly the next question. And you can see here, nothing is blocked. So I can type. And if I do to my system monitor, um, I can see that now it spikes because I just opened the system monitor. But I can see that there's actually nothing blocking at all the main. My CPUs are pretty low. Um, the fact that I'm streaming probably is what's bothering most, the, the CPU and the GPU and everything else, but there's nothing blocking. So everything is fine. And now I'm going to write my surname. Now I press enter. Um, hello. And that's me. And now I, to, to show my, um, my name and surname, I'm just using post message. This is a very boring demo, but it shows the, the, the thing that I'm not using 
um, I'm not using Minicoy, I'm not using special headers in the server, I'm just doing what I would do if those special headers were enabled already. And so, and that, that, that's it basically, that's the story. Um, I, I managed to create a thing that works, is robust and works everywhere. Um, and I can do also long waits. So let's try just one long wait. So I can wait for three seconds or more, but with the input demo, I already showed that I can wait forever or I can just don't, don't wait at all. And you can see it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty fast. So it's two, if I refresh, maybe it's less, maybe it's more. Uh, I used to be around two now because I'm doing more things and sharing my screen probably is a bit slower. But it's not, it's not too bad at all. Oh, sorry, this was a long wait again. And here is uh, the wait async. Um, and this is from the main waiting for the worker, which is slightly lower, even the native version. Um, wait async is almost as fast as the native version. And the sync, uh, you can see is three milliseconds, which is usually two again, um, is only because uh, basically I'm using Behind the scene, I'm using a, a, a service worker that doesn't change any security, any header, and nothing. It's just intercept post calls, and it forwards to the main that replies, and it forwards back as a, as a response to the, to the worker. Um, that's an overhead of 90% of the time only in Chrome, because in Firefox or Safari, um, the, you can't really spot the difference. Actually, 3 milliseconds is already a, a, an average uh, wait time, synchronous wait time for Firefox or, or even Safari, that goes up to five or more. And so um, I, I thought this would have been quite slow, but actually testing this in other browsers with the native um, headers and nat native functionalities they are almost as fast as, as, as uh, or as low uh, as Chrome is with uh, this polyfill in. And I think, and, and when the polyfill kicks in, you cannot really spot the difference in the other browsers. So I'm not sure if they will optimize that or what's going on for real, but that made me think that I want to update Coincident because I wanted to uh, not just demo this, I wanted to use this polyfill in PyScript. And so this is the most fundamental brick. We have few layers of uh, abstractions and the modules behind the scene. Coincident is even before Polyscript. Polyscript is before PyScript, but at the root of Coincident um, logic, there is native shared area buffer API and native Atomics wait, wait async, but especially wait is fundamental to make it work the way it does. So when we access document.body from a worker, it needs to do the round trip through the main thread, ask for, for the document body as a unique reference and handle all this back and forward. And, um, and so without weight and without these headers, we cannot have DOM in workers. Uh, and not just DOM, basically we cannot have any, any, any main thread APIs exposed or available in the worker. And so I want this uh, polyfill, which is super small, it's not more than 2K on the main and roughly 2K on the, on the, on the worker. Um, it's super small and it's, uh, uh, it's well written, easy to reason about, the code is super simple. And also I explained, there is a link uh, in the community call, I put the link uh, to Zabayon, which is, where is it? Here. And uh, yeah, I tried Coincident, uh, bad news, it didn't work out of the box. So I, have, I can build it, but I have tons of errors because first mistake, I'm using to bundle the whole thing into a single file. I'm using CommonJS and this thing cannot really work with CommonJS, but who cares? Because nobody's using CommonJS for our stack. They're using a script type uh, module to build, to, to bring in PyScript on the web and script type module even when you use um, anything else uh, locally. So it's gonna be uh, always, and we use type the ECMAScript native modules when we bootstrap Pyodide, when we bootstrap um, MicroPython. So for me to use the common JS to orchestrate some bundling of files, it was a mistake, but that's not the only thing. There are other mistakes in, in PolyScript, uh, uh, sorry, in Coincident that uh, um, I would like, I honestly would really like to 
have a, a, a little window of time to fix it because there's also another issue recently discovered with proxies um, mostly with Pyodide and performance with workers because Pyodide does some greedy access to fields um, out of any any single proxy that is created from the JavaScript side uh, and we benchmarked uh, and, and we, we realized that in the worker it's deadly slow so if you do in a loop some document query selector dot something dot something dot something is going to be super slow for no reason because we need to we want it to be as fast as possible this is not an issue for for MicroPython, to be honest. Is not uh, MicroPython doesn't have, doesn't suffer as much overhead. Proxies in MicroPython are pretty clean, but the main use case for the worker, at least at the beginning, was to actually enable Pyodide and all its good things that has uh, that comes with it, which is the ability to even load a runtime modules or use uh, um, all the all the all the Pyodide packages that are rebuilt in a wasm a, a compatible way so that's awesome and we want that to be not just awesome but also awesome and as fast as we can so there are things um i i put links already here and there um i don't want to read through all the things because it's going to be too technical and too annoying uh, probably or, or, or just boring or just a nonsense uh, but if you want to dig into more details please do um yeah so this is about my wishes let's say my I'm, I'm planning to make it happen i want coincident to be better uh, there is some work to do but once that better i want polyscript to, the, to to be better which is based on the latest coincident and then i want PyScript to be awesome so that the biggest pain point which has always been this uh, mini coy <laughs> headers cores coy um embedding youtube stuff that doesn't work if headers are run it and all these kind of things um i, I really would like to say hey, we have an alternative it doesn't change anything you can use your web page as it used to work before and, and you can also have all the good things from the worker and you should never think about uh, uh headers changing headers or uh, other things that might complicate the uh, regular flow for any any website um so that that that's it that's that's my idea in regard to this uh new way to uh bypass or work around that limitation around shared array buffer uh, last but not least um i already mentioned i want to take good good amount not too much hopefully but enough time to provide all the details, file a proper issue in Pyodide, um, put metrics, measurement, and things that work, things that don't, and, and show why uh, why the way proxies are handled right now is a bit problematic for our use case. Maybe they are fine, or maybe there is a better way, because if I remember correctly, there is also a way for Pyodide to work in workers out of the box. Maybe we are doing something wrong there. I don't know. But I want to actually don't just blame Pyodide for doing things wrong. I want to actually help or dig more into the code and try to propose eventually uh, a way to do things differently. But I think this is better uh, done in GitHub than in these community calls or uh, or, yeah. or I don't know because that's that's where code happens. Um, yeah. So this is this is about my list of things. Um, another one that the reason I didn't write in agenda items or or didn't put in here in upcoming works priority is that we have quite a lot of upstream issues and other things that I replied and never came back. But I feel like going through um, a lot of stuff is third party or. Uh, I feel like we are in a good shape in general in terms of bugs and there's nothing really blocking, but the, the thing is not the same when it comes to discussions. So maybe it would be cool to um, like move the discussion forward. Uh, I would like for Martin to read this as well, um, if you haven't already. Um, this is about uh, Named workers is something new that we introduce, and because it's new, I want to do it right. I wrote a lot of stuff, but the summary is that I think named worker we we could use this strategy, like similar to what Zabayon does. So it's a strategy where we can be relaxed; we don't need to throw everything. 
So if you have named workers because you want to access those workers and you want to access those exposed APIs and you don't care about the atomic sync, uh, weight sync and all this kind of stuff, you just want to await utilities from those workers, those workers are named and this is a new thing. So I think it shouldn't break, it should just work. If atomic um, weight, the synchronous one, is there because headers are there, then who cares, everything would work as expected. But if it's not, um, right now they are not enabled by default because it's throwing is like I, I cannot I cannot be it cannot be sync it cannot work and so the sync main only is a bit again we all agree this is a uh, name for the flag and so I, I try to summarize what are my thoughts here and this is also important because it's related to the work that I'm doing right now to enable uh, shared array buffer no matter what. So that also we have a lot of try catch, try new shared array buffer for that should all go to me and make everyone else happy. And then of course, uh, there are situations where you need maybe a tiny little extra setup because we have this we still need a service worker, but not to change a request, but just to intercept post messages. So there's still some documentation to write. But at the end of the day, I, I think we should make this as frictionless as possible if we can and if we want to, of course. That's it for me. Cool. Any questions for um, or comments for Andrea? Stunned silence. Um. <laughs> oh, oh, really, it all, all look really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is great, great work, you know, as usual. So. <laughs> So that yeah, means we can also once we once this rolls out, right? We can clean up the code in postscript.com where we add the headers, the magic headers in there, right? We won't need to. We can pull those. Still, so having the magic headers is still best way to go because it's it's native performance out of the box. Oh, but okay. it comes it comes with uh, side effects when it comes to embedding YouTube videos. They told me that it's not possible, and I say, hey. How about you use an iframe credentialless attribute and the credentialless yeah, right. attribute is nowhere and and all these kind of frictions that so all those things should disappear and everything should just work but once it's out we can have a better look at performance because it, it, it's going to be as a bit slower but i'm not expecting to be that slower because if right now for instance if pyodide if we manage with pyodide to fix the current proxy issue I think Pyodad will be as fast as MicroPython or very close to that. And, and at that point, if we add a, a tiny extra milliseconds, nobody will notice because it's a worker and it doesn't block. So who cares? Right. And until right. until yeah. we reach the 16 milliseconds threshold, which is usually on the web, is if it goes over 16 milliseconds, which is a time for one frame to paint the whole thing, um, that, that's a huge window for, for this kind of operation. So we need, we need to check and, and see how it goes. But I think... I think this this can work and it should remove a lot of issues and at the same time i think we can also think about already how about we uh, make it optional so we have settings and you say i want to use uh, synchronous things or i don't want to use synchronous things because if we can do that people can just already start experimenting with uh, how he, how it looks like if you have workers only for utilities hello cat hello, <laughs> and <Kat>. uh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so I, 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 I have um, good feelings about this and I'm super excited because I managed to make something that didn't exist until three days ago. And so I hope it is going to play well for us and it's going to solve a lot of issues. Yeah, I think it's, it's worth pointing out as well. Um, we were talking to Damien yesterday about this sort of stuff. Uh, he's starting to profile MicroPython performance and things like that. Uh, so in the spirit of, um, you know, PyScript and uh, PyDide and MicroPython all collaborating and amplifying each other's work and things like that, um, Damien uh, was asking, um, so this is, uh, Agria, something perhaps for you to uh, think about. Um, he was uh, profiling MicroPython and said that MicroPython is, I don't know, something like one, 1 1.2 to 2 times slower than regular python um uh, but with uh in wasm it's it can be up to nine times slower um and he's not quite sure why 
and he thinks there might be some compiler flags or some special trick with mscripten or something like that that uh, he needs to enable or understand or, or get clued up with um, so uh, you might be getting a, a knock on the door from Damien from MicroPython, uh, especially for Hood, um, if he could sort of uh, help with that. But likewise, when it comes to the proxy stuff, uh, the discussion we had last week about it uh, in this call, um, which is on our YouTube channel, um, is, is very interesting. And, and kudos to Andrea for, you know, he's going to put in the work to do all the research for you so you can see in very hard numbers terms you know look at how microphone does it it does it this way look how pyodide does it it does it that way and there's a cost of this that and the other um so um you know we've had other interactions with pyodide that have been um very collaborative and uh have worked really well so let's do this again um we all win then we're lifting each other up which is the important thing we're an open source community um and our default is collaboration so um uh, is there any, I'm, I'm just rabbiting on really, so uh, I'm going to shut up. Uh, um, any any more points uh, for Andrea or in general? Nope. Fabio, um, what's your cat called? The, this one, oh, you, you picked the, the one with the difficult Italian name. The, this one is Fiocco. Fiocco, right. Fuoco, yeah. th th that's not, that doesn't mean fiery, does it? No, that's no, Fuoco. That's Fuoco. That's fine. Rib, uh, ribbon. Ribbon. Yeah, or like, yeah, the when you do like the package thing and you put the, the ribbon on top of it, or just ribbon. Yeah, yeah bow. A little, you know, like bow. The bow. Yeah. 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 Um, so I missed the first part. Um, any. Anything um, out of ordinary or like, I, I, well, Martin and I paired yesterday. And so we wrapped up the the, the web stuff. Um, is there anything out of, we can we can merge and basically release or, or yeah. Nicholas? Yeah, I just had a couple of questions for Martin this morning. He's responded to them. Uh, once Martin's gone, yeah, that's kind of, we're, we're happy. I, I went through the docs to this, this morning to make sure, uh, that what, what we'd written actually bore some resemblance to, uh, what you'd written. Um, and so I'll do that again tomorrow morning. I don't think it'll take very long because you're almost there. I'm almost there. There's only a, a, a small delta as it were. So I'll just fix those and then, um, then we can land what you're doing and the docs that I've been preparing will land in the next when the next version of PyScript is released. Um, so that's kind of where we are. Uh, Martin, I don't know if yeah. there's anything else you want to add to that. Yeah, no, yeah, just very, we'll just need like a little 10 minute pairing session at some point just to like the changes that Nicholas suggested. There is like just one thing, but then it's, it's just a tiny thing. It's just a naming issue. And then we can push that and then do because there are other things that need to go in before the release, but we can do that in a separate PR. But this PR has already been out there too long and it's too big. No, yeah, so. yeah this PR is, it needs to be merged. Yeah, it's, a, it's, yeah, a, it's but, an um, epic, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. We and we discussed a few of them yesterday. So if there's nothing big, it's just um, a couple of little things that Nicholas spotted that just okay. we just overnight yeah, so. yeah but I, but i'm determined we get this in i mean it's like you know for god's sake press oh. the button and merge it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so <laughs> is the plan to release this week or next week uh next week's euro python so if we can do it this week with just this that's fine do a july the fourth one while you're all, while you're all off yeah yeah, yeah. celebrating yeah. independence we can <laughs> Not that there's any actual Perfect. Americans in this room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and if we can make it... Yeah, the additional thing that we discussed yesterday was actually to to look at the current state of the the other the additional ones, like media and geolocation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm that, anxious honestly, to get that in as well, because Invent yeah. needs to use, you know, like, stuff like that. I think yeah. if we can get the speech in... That's a priority because the speech to text and text to speech, because then that rolls into invent, which rolls into 
Uh, yeah, but that that one is also basically done. Like we we yeah. just need to wrap up things. Yeah. yeah. So I I think for the fourth I, I we should be good to be honest. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll we'll, we'll aim for either the fourth or the fifth, depending on you know. I, I'm hoping for the fourth. I'm quite confident for the fourth, but you know you never know. But yep. yeah, de definitely this week for a new release of Pi Script. Cool. July the fourth. May the 4th, no, that's May, no, that's something else completely different. Okay, uh, right, is there anything else? Because if not, uh, I know Andrea needs to, to skedaddle off because he's got an appointment somewhere. I'm taking part in a pub quiz later on, so I need to kind of uh, uh, have some tea before I go to the pub. Um, <laughs> other than that... Uh, that's such a British statement. <laughs> So I have, to have, have, tea tea to have some tea before I go to the pub. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, yeah. otherwise, I haven't got enough energy for drinking the pints. That's the thing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop the recording and.